as she's told me that it's a pretty long name, but I'm going like, to tell you a little bit how to spell it. So it's called Sugi Tono Nugroho, which is means, it's Javanese name. Sugi means rich, Tono means land, and Nugroho means blessed. So I end up working in agriculture because my mom and dad wishing that I have tons of land and giving tons of blessed to everybody. So, yeah. Um, I want to you all imagine your last meal, all your favorite meal. Because this one is my favorite meal. It's called nasi padang. It's, uh, it's one plate that consists of everything, from vegetables, fried eggs, proteins, you name it. And if you, if you ever uh, see that even we produce more than, worth, more, more than 10, 10 billion food worth of produce, we only 7.6 billion people in the world. So how lucky we are, we can still our, have our last meal. So in fact, that even we produce tons of food out there, it's not going to be like solving our hunger problems in the world. So produce more foods is not going to be the solutions. Fighting the world hunger is not that easy. So 11.3% people in the world that feel a chronic pain because of hunger. Because, not because like you and me decide to go on diet. Not those kind of pain. This, this pain is kind of like a, a chronic pain that followed by disease, fever, diarrhea, and nausea. And, and I, I hope and believe there's no one in this room that ever been through that, because it's horrible. So there is tons of initiative in the whole world from food banks and food charities that already happens in decade. And people start getting used to about there is a place in the world that have on hunger problems. The world used to that I want to give a headline right here. It's, 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 it's not the problems that we need to get used to. It's, no, it's a problem that we need to solve. And if you want to know, there is more than 15 wars in, all, in the past history that, that because of food security and also social problems. So food is really, really a big problems right here. And even with more in the last decade, there is, we, we have tons of populations coming in to the world, and we keep decreasing in our ability to produce more foods because we do unsustainable farming and climate change. So from those 11.3%, there's around 750 million, more than 30% of it is children. Is it, their, is it their fault to be feel hunger every day? Is it their parents' fault? Is it their government's fault? No, it's, it's not their fault. It's right now, it's you and me problems. It's our problems. How we can fat the world, it's gonna be like our next big problems. So I'm always revisiting one of the biggest industry in the world, agriculture industry. In Indonesia especially, this industry is the most corrupt industry that happens trying to feed all people in the world. So we have lack of diversify and also lack, lack of decentralized food supply. And we, what we need right now is a universal, safe, and nutritious food for all the people in the world. So if you want to work things out from the agriculture industry, we need to know who is going to be like, who is the player on it. So we're going to revisit the most micro-level player on it. It's a smallholder farmers. In fact, 90% of smallholder farmers in the world, they actually produce 30 to 34% food production for you guys. But even they, they work in really rural area in the most developing world. And, and I saw with my own eyes that the infrastructure is really bad. There is no, there is no, there's lack of food, there's lack of everything. But while those big guys, big company, they're focusing not 
on feeding us, they're focusing on how to maximize profits. That's, that's what the reality is. And, and how actually we help these kind of farmers that right now be a victim by in the whole corrupt industry. And they, they are the ones that's crippled by the whole situations because more they suffer, more, more benefits for all the big company. So if you want to know about the problem of farmers, we start, we start wanting to know the first things that, ha that happens in farming. So it's all around communication problem. So right now our farmers, especially in Indonesia, it's feel insulated by all, by all stakeholders in places. So I give you a small story while I, while I say they feel insulated. So I got a call in the middle of the night. So they, they told me, hey, hey Pa, can you go in directly from Jakarta to, to, to my village? I'm asking him like, uh, what's happening? Oh, can I send my, my team to go there? Oh, he said like, oh, you cannot, you need to go in by yourself. Okay, I I'm, I'm take my car, I, I drove around five hours to their village. After I'm, I'm, uh, I'm arrived, I see m my farmers that call me is strangled in the middle of the village. What's happening? I'm asking, and surrounded by the whole people in the village. He, he said to me like, hey, but you need to explain to them about what's happened. So I'm, I'm pretty confused by that. So in fact that my farmers get accused by the whole village using black magic to actually plant things. Because they, they feel there's no way you can plant things in the middle of the jungle around 10 acres of chili because, because there is, they didn't know about technology. So I need to explain, hey, there, there, there is a technology out there to actually helping you, giving you tons of access. So I need to explain not just technology, I need to explain around internet. How, how we are we using them in agriculture? So there's a kind of mixed feeling when I'm explaining them how this, how big is the gap. But what makes me happy is actually like right now, technology can be the bridge and start closing those gaps. So the, the man with Ferrari, co uh, Ferrari jacket is the one actually strangled in the middle of the village. And the other guy is called Ipit. Those two guys they actually put food in our table right now. Even in behind those beautiful smile, they always feel worried because uncertainty in agriculture. Because when I'm talk to him like, hey, how about, how, how is it your business? They always say like, oh, only God knows. So, and, and why, why be in all those certainty, I keep asking them, why do you want to be farmers? He, he, see, uh, he say like this, like, for them, Farmers is not a job. For them, farmers is a way of life, and they born to actually feeding people around them. So the purpose of smallholder farmers on do and that big company is different. One is maximizing shareholder value, and one is actually feeding you guys. So how we can using technology to help ease their mind. And after those kind of uncertainty, we we are right now have like more than 60 percent, our farmers is more than 65 years old. So there's no regenerations out there. It's not their fault because like every farmers that I, I, I came through, they, they always say to their son, hey, don't be like me. It's, it's already really hard to be farmers. I saving for you guys so you can go to school, be a lawyer, be a doctor. So that's why there's no regenerations happens in agriculture right now. And imagine in the next 10 to 20 years, who's gonna feed us? If so how right now we using technology to actually help them? We starting with opening them access to finance, better input, and also markets. As, as we try, Crowdy try to giving them finance to all those farmers, yeah. In, in our first year, they ran away with our money. So they didn't know how to using, to using the money wisely. So we need to actually know, even all those farmers need help, not all farmers ready to be helped. So we need how we can help them while not giving cash at all. 
So we're working with tons of like fertilizers company, small mom and pop shop input provider. We channel those money to those guys. So farmers only receiving fertilizers, seeds, and everything that they need to actually plant. And when harvest time is come, we notify all the buyers to take directly to those farmers. And those buyers will pay to us for those repayment. So we create a zero cash ecosystems in every village in, in Indonesia. Right now, we only working with more than 20,000 farmers all across Indonesia. It's really a long way to go. There's 26.1 million farmers. But what we can do? So in global level, we can start pushing people to actually doing more sustainable agricultures. But we can push more government to do more good policy in terms of supporting smallholder farmers. And we start changing the mindset instead of work, instead of big guys against those smallholder farmers, we can start how you, we, they can work together to actually feeding us. And for you and me, so we can start by local and stop wasting our food and start learning the risk. If we not do it today, who's gonna feed us tomorrow? So it's a literally long journey, but it's a worth struggle for the world. Thank you. <laughs>